And this table will help us summarize some of the things you need to know going into this unit to remember from uh, previous classes. So let's start with the first one. Uh, groups. Let's take whenever a carbon has four groups. So uh, before in the transition metal unit, we call this ligands. They're not called ligands in this unit, but they're group, three different, or four different things attached to the central carbon. Uh, hybridization. Whenever there's four things attached to the center carbon, that's sp3. And it doesn't just have to be carbon. Hybridization goes for other atoms, but we're interested in carbon uh, for this unit. Okay? Uh, the bond. Well, if that happens, it's going to have single bonds. So single bonds. Whenever they're single bonds, those are called sigma bonds. So we're talking about a sigma bond. What's a sigma bond? That's when, uh, if you have two atoms, the bond occurs between the nuclei. So if there's an atom here, atom here, the bond occurs right in the middle. That's called a sigma bond. OK, what's the shape? It's tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. So that means uh, it looks like a tetrahedron shape, and it's 109.5 degree bond angle, or what's called the ideal bond angle. It might not be that exact bond angle, but those are the ideal mathematical angles. OK, how do you draw a thing with four groups? Well, it looks like this. You have the carbon in the middle, and this is to draw the 3D looking structure. So if you want to draw it in 3D, you have two groups in the plane. You'll have one group coming out towards you, and that's drawn with a triangle uh, called a wedge. And then there's one group going away from you into the plane, and that's drawn with a, a dash. Again, there's four groups. One, two, three, four. What's the hybridization scheme? Well, that's when all four orbitals, the 2s and the 2p, hybridized to make four sp3 hybrid orbitals. And, since, and there's four electrons, because uh, carbon is 2s2, 2p2. And each electron goes, one electron goes in each orbital. OK? Now we'll see how uh, it'll look different when we have a different number of groups. So that's four groups. For carbon, you can also have three groups. Three groups would be sp2. Uh, that would allow you to have a double bond in the mix. So you're having a double bond whenever there's sp2. You will now have both sigma and pi bonds. So you, you learn what a sigma is a pi bond. Is let's say you have two nuclei, and the bond does not occur between the nuclei. It occurs above and below the nuclei. That's called a pi bond. So a pi bond, as you can imagine, uh, it, it can't free rotate. If you rotate a pi bond, it'll break it, because the bond's occurring above and below. So once you rotate it, it breaks the plane. But for a sigma bond, it can rotate all at once, and it won't break a sigma bond. Shape. This is trigonal. Planar. Trigonal planar. It's flat. It has 120 degree bond angles, ideal bond angles. What does this look like? You have a double bond and two single bonds attached to the central carbon. Notice this counts as three groups. There's a single bond a single bond and a double bond. So that's three groups total. Okay, that's the three groups in the very beginning. Whereas the one at the top had four groups, so we start off with a four at the very beginning. What's the hybridization scheme? Uh, looks like this. Three will hybridize to sp2, one will not hybridize. One of the 2p orbitals will not hybridize. It will keep its electron. Like that. Well, one thing I'll add into this drawing here. 
uh, how do you draw this with its sp3 orbitals? So I'll add this kind of into both drawings. An sp3 orbital just looks like a lobe, like that. So if you're drawing in the hybridization in instead of just drawing the bond, you do your best to replicate this drawing just with lobes, like that. Okay. So it's still tetrahedral. The sp3 hybrid orbitals look like that, just lobes. If you're drawing it for this one, uh, the sp2 hybridized orbitals also look like lobes. So you kind of draw those in a trigonal planar sort of fashion. And you'd also have to draw the 2p orbital. I'll just draw it in a different color, red. The 2p orbital has two parts. It has two parts, the low, the top, and the bottom part. So this counts as one orbital right here. And it is orthogonal, or 90 degrees, to the trigonal planar plane. OK, so that's basically this drawing uh, mixed with this picture. So you're putting these hybrid orbitals into this picture, same row there. OK, so that's three groups. Now we're going to do two groups. And this will be the final one. A carbon can also have two groups. It's called sp hybridized. So one of the s and one of the p is hybridized. This will cause it to have triple bonds. Though in some cases, it could have be two double bonds. So I'll put a double bond times two. But usually it's a triple bond. This is a sigma plus two pi bonds. So every bond has a sigma, and the two other bonds are pi bonds. So that's sigma and two pi adds up to three bonds total. So that means that this uh, is not three times stronger than a single bond. It's definitely stronger, but not three times, because they're not all the same kind of bond. Yet. OK, what shape is this? This is linear, 180 degree bond angles. What does it look like when you draw it out? Well, it'll be a triple bond and a single bond on either side of the carbon. Uh, in some cases, it would look like this, where you have two double bonds. This is a more rare structure, but could occur. More likely, you're going to see the one on the top, though. Uh, what's the hybridization scheme? In this case, two of the 2p orbitals do not hybridize, but one does with the 2s orbital to make an sp hybridized orbital is what I said earlier uh, in the hybridization column. And uh, everybody has one electron. What does that look like if you mix these two drawings to draw the, the drawing with the hybridized orbitals? It'll look like this. You'd have, there's going to be an orbital for each one of these horizontal lines. So you have two sp hybridized orbitals here. And they also look like the lobes, just like the other hybridized orbitals. And then you'll see you have two of the 2p orbitals. And they're both, everything's orthogonal. So here's one of the 2p's, like that. 2p, I did label 2p here earlier. And then the other one will be at 90 degrees to both of those. So I'll drop going kind of in and out. Here's the other. So note that for the two P's, they each have two parts. But the blue, what I drew in blue horizontally here, these are two individual sp hybridized orbitals. OK. This whole table, when you look at it all together, is the summary of everything you learned uh, before in VSPR and hybridization, et cetera. OK? So I want to summarize on one table. Let me point a couple things out. One is, carbons will always have four bonds, okay? A neutral carbon will have four bonds. One, two, three, four. It's two groups, but four bonds. 
up there, three groups, four bonds, and at the top, four groups, four bonds. So there's always four bonds. 